So in regards to Elon Musk, I've always asked myself, Elon, you have the machine that builds the machine. So where's the robot that builds the robot? Hello everyone and welcome to a Clean Technica deep dive. In this video we are going to detail what Tesla is most likely going to announce at AI Day. And it all has to do with Elon's numerous hints about solving real world AI. And for those who don't know, uh, real world AI refers to being able to capture, uh, process and interact with the real world through AI. And this could be as small as a warehouse or as unlimited as all the roads and infrastructure and all the variations of it around the world. All of the billions of unique homes with different furniture and layouts is also a pretty tough one. You see, Elon has a lot of goals in life and many of those goals are actually roads that lead to Mars. Yet there's something that has always been missing and that's robots. None of his companies make robots and I don't mean like assembly line machines, actual robots, the stuff that you'll need for asteroid mining, orbital construction, and creating civilization on Mars. The closest thing they have is autopilot. The reason why there are no robots is not because of physical limitations of robots. Sure, Elon has said on occasion that robots are not really good with placing cables or uh, stuffing foam or rubber into small spaces. But the real limitation is that there is no real world AI training program. And that's where AI Day comes into play. And it's absolutely not going to be Autonomy Day 2.0. So to answer the most obvious question, if it's not going to be aut about autopilot, then what is Tesla AI Day going to be about? The most likely answer to that is that they are going to present a software package, an AI for training real world AI, if you will. And to start us off, here's a small clip uh, from the 2017 Google I.O. conference. We are excited about designing better machine learning models, but today it is really time consuming. It's a painstaking effort of a few engineers and scientists, mainly machine learning PhDs. We want it to be possible for hundreds of thousands of developers to use machine learning. So what better way to do this than getting neural nets to design better neural nets? We call this approach AutoML. It's learning to learn. So the way it works is we take a set of candidate neural nets, think of these as little baby neural nets, and we actually use a neural net to iterate through them till we arrive at the best neural net. We use a reinforcement learning approach. And it's, the, the results are promising. To do this is computationally hard, but cloud TPUs put it in the realm of possibility. We are already approaching state of the art in standard tasks like CIFAR image recognition. So whenever I spend time with the team and think about neural nets building their own neural nets, it reminds me of one of my favorite movies, Inception. And I tell them, we must go deeper. I left that joke at the end in there on purpose because Tesla, they do go a lot deeper. And here's how. So half the trouble with AI is trying to get data to feed it with. And we're talking about lots of data. We're talking about thousands, if not billions of, um, let's just say examples. Cat pictures? Easy. Internet is full of them. MRI scans? Harder. 360 degree video, rather than images, of a car driving in every situation physically possible on Earth? Insanely hard then even if you do have access to the data, it also needs to be labeled. So Tesla has, for the most part, been able to automate uh, the data collection and labeling process. So here is the first part of a clip from a presentation given by Tesla's Andre Carpathy. We've struggled with these heavily occluded stop signs. We found that the detector was not performing very well when they were heavily occluded. And that we have a mechanism in this data engine process and we can ask the fleet please apply this detector on top of everything else you're doing. And if the this detector scores high, then please send us an image. And then the fleet responds with a somewhat noisy set, but they boost the amount of examples we have of stop signs that are occluded. So we have tens of thousands of occluded stop signs. Uh, the fleet can send us as many as it takes. I'm not actually 100% sure how you built out a data set like this without the fleet. So yeah, I'm sure that Tesla has become the best in the world at automatically labeling 4D footage. And this is something that they could sell. 
But when the AI encounters a new situation, an edge case, or when the confidence is low, you still need a lot of people manually labeling data. And for that, Tesla has a team of 500 people, and they actually want to double that team size to 1,000 people. Uh, this is something that Elon Musk told us directly in a conversation that he had with our CEO, uh, Zachary Shan. Don't let the number of labelers here confuse you, because even within the scope of real-world AI, navigating jam-packed infrastructure and all of the variations of it around the world is probably the hardest problem that you could solve. The more edge cases, the more labelers you're going to need, and so companies uh, that are interested in using Tesla's AI building AI for simpler problems will need a lot less labelers. Now, I said that half the trouble uh, with AI is getting the data and labeling it then the other half of the problem is training the AI. And so manually, if you do, try to do this manually, this is never going to work. You're going to need to automate that process. The AI needs to be able to learn and improve itself automatically or with as few people involved in the process as possible. And to show you that Tesla has already done this, here is part two from that uh, presentation given by Tesla's Andre Carpathy. We see that we're failing on occluded science, and then we, uh, once we have the tests and we're failing them, we then spin the data engine on occluded science, and then we see that the percent pass goes from 40% to 99% or something like that, and then we're confident that this is actually working relatively well. And all of this is not maintained by hundreds of people. All of this is maintained by a small elite team of Tesla AI people, of basically like a few dozen. So how is it even possible to make progress, and how, how is it even possible that your small team can maintain uh, so many tasks and get them to work over time? Um, so the North Star for actually achieving this for us is called Operation Vacation, uh, which I'll describe in a second. Uh, but basically, the idea is that for any new task, uh, you have a latency to actually the task working. And there's a process, and we understand how to, uh, the process for getting a task to work. And we're trying to develop as much automation machinery to actually support the development of these new features and new tasks. And we're removing engineers from that, uh, from that loop so they're not involved. We're just building out infrastructure. And then we have a data labeling team and a, you know, PMs and so on that can actually um, use that infrastructure to create new, new um, detectors. So as an example, we we're working with caution lights recently. We're trying to detect when the police car uh, lights are turned on. This is an example of a new task that we'd like to know about. And we sort of have a cookie cutter, we know exactly what to, uh, kind of approach to, we know exactly what it takes to get a task to work. All the infrastructure is in place. And if your new task is a um, member of any of these, um, or an instance of any of these prototype classes, then all of the infrastructure is just plug and play and goes through the full data engine. You can collect the seed data set, you label your examples, you source more examples in the cases where you're failing, you deploy it to shadow, uh, in shadow mode, you source examples and you grind up metrics, you create all the unit test predicates. All this is completely automated. And this, uh, we're mostly developing the automation infrastructure, and then it's easy to develop any new task, and that's kind of how we get this to work. So if you pay close attention, Tesla is trying to expand the job that labelers are able to do, uh, so that, as uh, the CEO of Google put it, the machine learning PhDs can focus on other tasks. And so uh, with the labelers doing all of this extra work now, which is phenomenal, what are those machine learning PhDs focusing on? Well, they, uh, the first most obvious task is to make sure that the process of learning uh, it comes better and faster, consumes less uh, computer hardware, and also can learn from a smaller data sample. Now, as was said earlier, uh, getting 10,000 images of a stop sign is relatively easy. Getting 10,000 examples of an edge case would kind of disqualify it from being an edge case. So learning from a smaller sample group is crucial. Nonetheless, Tesla can work with even a single edge case example. Part of these people will be working on turning those single examples into simulations that the car can learn from. Elon has said, I think, more than once that uh, one of the main benefits of having such a large fleet versus uh, extensive simulation is the fact that you will encounter these weird edge cases that you will would never have thought of to simulate in the first place. Uh, then some experts will most likely also be focusing on improving uh, the image slash object recognition software that labelers rely on for their work, which at the same time also results in better auto labeling, meaning a smaller workload for the labelers. Then there's also this major effort that is still underway at Tesla to um, change the code so that all of the camera inputs are stitched into 360 videos. 
and the neural nets can then get the information that they need from that 360 video uh, rather than the separate camera feeds that they used to rely on. And that's an older system that still runs concurrently with the new one. And once Tesla has finally finished the process of migrating all the neural, net, neural nets to the new system, they can eliminate the old one and free up a lot of space uh, on the hardware 3 chip. In fact, um, I have a theory that once they finish this process of migrating um, to 360, they will finally announce the hardware 4 chip. Because hardware 3 has components like a larger GPU and CPU that are expensive and take up a lot of space um, and are not really necessary uh, once the old system has been eliminated. Part of hardware 3 was to help the transition from hardware 2. And now that the once the autopilot rewrite has been completed, it won't be necessary. So if Tesla decides to sell this AI training AI, how will be this any different or better from what is currently available on the market? And to explain that, let's take a look at what is by most known as the most advanced robotics company on earth, Boston Dynamics. Now, Boston Dynamics has become a bit of an internet sensation with their Spot and Atlas robots showing absolutely amazing choreography and ability to walk like actual animals. In fact, as I am writing this, they released a video showing the Atlas robot doing parkour. What most people don't realize is that Boston Dynamics is basically, so far, mostly solving just a single problem, a really hard problem, and that is walking. These cool dances, uh, these were pre-programmed and are not as interesting from an AI standpoint. What is more interesting is that all of Boston Dynamics robots can be moved with a simple joystick. You tell it where to go and the AI figures out how to get there by walking. It's not like a remote controlled little car where the moment you press something on the remote, it'll immediately have an effect. Because in this case, you are not directly in control. You just tell it to move. You tell it the direction and maybe the speed and it figures out how to get there. Or with the Mars, like with the Mars rover, um, you, know, you just choose a destination and the AI figures out the most optimal route to get there. The parkour here is more impressive since it is learning how to traverse a complex terrain as a humanoid would. However, if you want to put Atlas to work in a warehouse or worse, a factory, it won't be able to. It does not have the intelligence and its situational awareness is limited to not bumping into a wall or uh, opening a door, which is kind of like auto park, which as we know, doesn't always work. In any case, the robot situational awareness just isn't programmed uh, to do th stuff like evading a forklift that's coming right at it or to walk in the safe zone to begin with. Uh, nor does it have the intelligence to understand how A leads to B leads to C and be able to draw upon previous experience to predict stuff. Uh, Tesla's AI will allow the robot not to just mindlessly pick up a box, but reason how to pick it up. So, yes. A lot of individual aspects can be programmed without Tesla's AI package, but it would be a lot easier with it. When it comes to real world AI, it beats out any other offering there is on the market because it requires a lot less time and a lot less experts to get stuff done. Tesla could even start selling its power efficient hardware 3 chip to power these new robots. The AI that makes the AI literally makes the AI in a way that will work well on this hardware 3 chip. In fact, uh, thanks to economics of scale, this could actually further reduce the cost of the hardware 3 chip for Tesla. And Elon has actually also already said that Dojo will be offered as a service, but did not go into details. Perhaps because Dojo is part of an AI building software package that they want to offer. So to recap, Tesla has automated the labeling of data. Well, as much as possible. Tesla has automated the tools needed to create and improve AI so that a much larger number of people with less training, like labelers, can do work previously only machine learning experts could do. Tesla's AI can create an AI capable of navigating the real world with intelligent situational awareness, uh, cracking real world AI, as Elon has uh, said a bunch of times. Tesla can offer a unique and low power chip that can run a complex AI created by uh, this software package. Tesla can offer a supercomputer, uh, which can help with training the AI that you create. And I just need to say this just in case, because some people have asked me this, this can never lead to general AI on its own. We are nowhere near anything like that. 
If anything, this is just enormous progress towards automating the process for creating narrow AI, especially for tasks related uh, to interacting with the real world or cracking real world AI. So what kind of robotic products can be made with this that were either too difficult or too expensive to do before? You could create a robotic kitchen, automate traditional warehouses, automate parts of a factory that were impossible to automate before, or make the automation more robust uh, by adding intelligence. You could automate uh, some construction tasks, uh, create a robotic maid for the house maybe, and most importantly, robots for space. Uh, we're talking about stuff like asteroid mining, uh, orbital construction, and maybe even a clanking self-replicator, which is uh, basically a factory that can create construction robots as well as the parts needed for another clanking self-replicator, uh, which said robots can then construct. Well, they can also construct all kinds of things. Uh, that is just one of the possibilities. And, you know, Elon Musk, he's already a huge fan of in situ resource util utilization or ISRU. And SpaceX actually already, uh, their first attempt at this will be sucking in atmospheric gases on Mars and turning them into rocket propellant. And it is very unlikely that he will stop there. Tesla AI Day could be the beginning to a whole new direction for all of Elon's companies that will make the fog that is the future clear up quite a bit. Thank you for watching and I will be making a video right after uh, AI Day to analyze everything that was said. And Elon Musk himself complimented my analysis article of the hardware three chip that was detailed on autonomy day. So I hope that this will hit the mark again. If you enjoyed this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up so that more people get to see it. And if you haven't yet, subscribe. That way you get to see more of our videos. Uh, other than that, I wish you guys all a wonderful AI day, and I will see you after. Later.